Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kids Independent Media Production. Today, we are on our latest stop in search for the perfect tom tone, possible, amazing, possibly amazing hack. The reason we're saying possibly amazing is because when we start to mess with our Tom's tone beyond just the tuning, there are gains and losses to be had no matter what we're doing to it. This is definitely something that we are taking with us going forward because the effect that it had was shocking, it was easy, inexpensive, didn't even change the look of the drums and anything that can do that for us, we're definitely gonna hang on to. And here it is. We are using studio rings, which would normally sit on the batter heads of the drums, placed them inside the drums, resting on the rezzo head. So as you can see, the batters have had no anything stuck to them. They look normal, they feel normal, but the sound has changed dramatically in addition to some other things that happened to the sound of the kit because of it. First up, let's have a little comparison between the wide open drums and what happened when we put the rings inside. As you can hear, pretty significant difference. They still sound like drums, but the character is dramatically altered. The first thing to know about experimenting with this is that we are not using these rings in between the head and the bearing edge or anything like that. We're just dropping them loose inside of the drum. Now, because this is the method, we need to use an undersized studio ring because depending on the size of your drum's exact shell diameter, Chances are you're not gonna be able to put a 12 inch studio ring inside of a 12 inch drum after you have the head on and have it fit. This also means that there's a little bit of mass from that ring closer to the center of the rezzo head, which adds to the effect, helps us get this gated sound and really jumps up the punchiness of the drums. The other cool thing about this is that if you've ever been a player who used rings on top of the batter heads as they were traditionally designed to be used, a lot of attack goes away when you put them there because they are suppressing some of the high end, rounding out the tone nicely, but some of that aggressive punchiness goes away. So since we're not physically affecting the batter head, we're retaining all of that attack. And if anything, by muffling the resonant head, we're elevating that punchiness. Let's hear these a little more in the context of some grooves now. For this demonstration, we are using, again, undersized studio rings. So the 12 inch tom has a 10 inch diameter. The 16 inch tom has a 14 inch diameter. This allows them to move freely inside, allows it to breathe with the drum. Even with the rings sitting loose inside of the drum on the rezzo head, we're not experiencing any odd sounds or buzzing or anything like that. Nothing to worry about there. 
Probably the biggest effect that we noticed right out of the gate when we first started trying this out is that the sympathetic vibrations between the toms and the snare and the kick and the toms dramatically reduced. Let's hear a little quick back and forth between the wide open and the muffled with the snare drum. Sympathetic vibration between the toms and the snare is something that we see a ton in the comments. There's a lot of conversation about it. And if you are finding yourself looking for a punchy tom sound at the same time as you also want it to not talk to the snare so much, this is an incredibly fast adjustment that you can also leave in the drums if it makes you happy, not have to mess with it at the gig or at rehearsal ever again. Over the course of experimenting here at the show, we have discovered that most of the time when you start to do something to the heads on the drums, there is a benefit and also a little bit of a cost. And you may have noticed over the course of the demonstrations here that some fundamental tone is definitely lost when we put rings inside of the drums. This makes sense because we are adding mass to the rezzo head. We are inhibiting its vibration. This means that the overall tone, sustain, everything about the drum is receiving some kind of muffling. But what this also means for us is it's getting us this punchier tone. It's retaining that attack. And depending on the music that you're making, this could really dial in and sort of acoustically gate your whole drum set and make everything speak a bit more individually, especially if you're playing very fast, very busy, very aggressive music where you need to hear everything super clear. curious thing that happened today in this experiment is that we talked a little bit and chose to do the studio ring installed version of this first and check out how that sounded and we were super into it different than we were used to hearing from these drums we were having a lot of fun with it didn't really realize how much fundamental tone was getting removed from the drums until we took the rings out to do the comparison demos and this just goes to show you that even drums that you know really well, they can change a lot with a relatively small amount of muffling and adjustment inside. This is bordering on turning them into a different set of drums, frankly. The part of that that was curious was that we were totally happy with the first one until we had that comparison. And what this means for us is that in an actual musical context, be it a gig or recording or rehearsal or what have you, if you're not sitting there A, being a bunch of different sounds, many of the sounds that we're dealing with here would be totally fine in most situations. And being afraid to try these things or being concerned that you're losing a little bit of something to gain something else isn't so much the end of the world. We don't need to be stressing about that. Instead, treat it as an opportunity to get to know your drums better and get a new sound out of them that's going to give you some new inspiration. If you've been with us for our cotton ball experiments or you're familiar with the idea of putting cotton balls inside of a drum to achieve a similar behavior, this is in that same direction. This may be a little bit more dramatic than the amount of cotton balls we would normally use because of the material, the mass, all of that, but both of those are way better than any time that you've seen somebody stick a ton of tape onto the resonant head. I wish I had a dollar for every time that I had to pull fistfuls of tape off of resonant heads at gigs and studios because someone there was just trying to get rid of some of that resonance, some of that sustain, and this is doing a beautiful job of it without getting any gunk all over the heads. That said, if this is too dramatic of a change in the context that you're working, there are a lot of options beyond putting a whole ring in there. You could use part of a ring, you could move to cotton balls, Putting things inside the drum is one of the newer hacks that have become familiar to me, and I'm up for trying just about anything as long as I can keep the batter heads clear because it's a much nicer look, it feels better, and we don't lose that attack. Moving to doing our tom muffling inside of the drum beyond it looking nice and clean and clear, it also allows someone like me who uses a lot of different implements on there, especially brushes and bundles and brooms, it affords us the ability of not running into stuff that's stuck onto the heads because frankly, when I'm practicing, I don't have any muffling on the heads. I am accustomed to being able to do whatever I want. And if there's tape or rings or gels or whatever on there, I'm gonna end up getting stuck in them or flicking them off. It's at the end of the day for me, a functionality thing as much as anything else.
there's about a million kinds of modern sticky and clip-on and other kinds of mufflers out there, but the fact that these have been around for years and years and have functionally stayed the same the whole time speaks to their versatility and what an effect they can have in a lot of contexts. An additional discovery that I made when I was working through some demos here was that the dynamic range of the drums in terms of how quiet or loud they could be felt similar to me over the span whether the rings were inside or not. However, the way that the resonance grows when you start to play really aggressively was much more gated and suppressed as I was really getting into them, which made me approach them a little bit differently. And on the one hand, it was inspiring to hit them really hard, but at the same time, sometimes I play harder for the sake of projection just of the articulation and like getting it over the top of the resonance. And with this, I felt like I was getting that clarity without having to hit quite so hard, which especially in smaller rooms or situations where maybe I need to take up a little less sonic space, this is an excellent way to go. All right, thanks so much for coming along on this journey. Um, speaking of which, if you want to see some other things you can do with Studio Rings, we have done a fair amount of experimenting in the past. I recommend you go back and see all the things that we've found that you can do with these, including making your own jingle rings if you have a broken tambourine lying around or something like that. Later on this week, we're going to have all of the rest of the demos from today, muffling and not, over on the Patreon. If you'd like to check that out, please follow the link below. See if there's a tier that's right for you. There's a lot of great content over there, and it is the best way to help us continue doing this show. We want to do it for as long as possible. And finally, like, comment, subscribe, and leave us a comment with stories you might have about using studio rings, especially if it is something unorthodox. <laughs> ¶¶